Okay, so our first question is, what are we doing here? Like, what are we at? And Peter, it feels like you would be the best person to explain this dinner tradition. Why do we have a dining room in the office? (laughs) On the 19th floor. (laughs) When I joined Benchmark, there was great optimism between Bill and me about, you know, injecting new practices, new habits, new ideas into the firm. And Bill had just read the Ben Franklin uh, biography. And Ben had four dinners, if I recall, a week, but they were like going deep on finance and then on, you know, chemistry and then on life sciences. And, uh, and he took the catalyst to say like, why aren't we doing dinners? And anyway, we had this like playful, you know, experiment where we said, well, let's try a few of them. And then we did a, a big dinner towards the end of the year. And I think it was like 2007, maybe 2006, 2006. It was actually my first year. And, uh, it was amazing. Like time stood still and, and we realized just, like just the partners or no, we had four outside guests, uh, Katarina fake, uh, Mike McHugh, yep. um, Gideon, you and Martin Mikos, if I'm not mistaken. And it was electric. And we came out of that. Bill had this habit. He'd always call me in the car after like, what do you think of the dinner? I'm like, ah, I think it was fun, but I want to go to bed. He's like, no, no, no. And alcohol had been served. People were in like, a, it was his baby. He wanted to like keep working on the concept. Well, well, we, we danced with this idea. And so the concept that, that I came to is that firms are full of strategies that aren't coupled to reality. And if you look at a venture firm, eventually it's just a collection of habits. And this is stealing from William James, who I think was the greatest American thinker. Um, that, you know, we are nothing but an amalgamation of our habits and habits. So character, they, so everything. So the idea that we should be nurturing curiosity, which is the essential lifeblood of the firm needed a habit. And, and, and Mondays, as much as they're an attempt at that, you sit around the office and you joke around, you try and d- dive into topics. They're, they're limited. And so the dynamic range of a dinner with, um, you know, uh, an open ended, no agenda, wild, explorations of the most bizarre things your partners might be curious about. And I've definitely gotten a few, you know, rat holes that, with this group <laughs> and they pulled me out. Uh, you know, it just became one of those things that honored the purpose of the firm, which is the sense of like constantly learning and, and activating our curiosity. But um, in a collective effervescence of a group that we could never get in a one-on-one dinner. Um, one of the challenges, which is being manifest right now, is that <laughs> in a table, you know, where there's a head of the table, you can get a dominant participant in the dinner <laughs> conversation. But the problem with the table is that you either have a rectangular uh, structure, which carries power structure embedded in it, um, or you have a circular table, which atomizes the group. And so I'd seen this table, uh, the seven by Jean-Marie Massoud, who's a French designer. And um, it ran with the idea, something would be organic that could expand and collapse, but most essentially destruct or deconstruct power centers and, and create a non-hierarchical construct with intimacy. But this table ends up being, um, Ole Lundberg designed it. We gave him, I gave him a hand sketch and, and he ran with it. And, uh, it's, um, allowed Ole's lifestyle to meaningfully upgrade because the number of people <laughs> with means that have sat at this table that decided they need a table just like this. Uh, well, so. and the people you have at this table, just for listeners who don't understand the gravity of this dinner, it tends not to just be the five partners. You have pretty esteemed guests come to these. It's the spotlight of attention, which is the biggest gift you can give to another human being on an individual. And more often than not, it's somebody that we haven't worked with or invested in. And uh, I think you guys might've mentioned this in the podcast that uh, we've had dinners with people like um, Dylan Field. And, oh, you come away, you're swept off your feet. You're like, why? this is why we exist to serve people like that. Um, Toby from Shopify. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos has been... Um, we travel to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Do you bring the table? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not portable. The, the yeah. Dina side, Seattle side, where we, we, LA. We, we've been in L. We have been in LA. We've been in Seattle. And I think yeah. you can tell yeah. just from you can see the ethos of the firm in the structure of the table too, which is that you can't have a sidebar conversation in this table because everybody right. else can hear it, and so it's all one conversation, and that. Um, you know, sort of coming from a, from the outside and then being part of Benchmark, like the one conversation element of everything that we do on Monday is so powerful because we're all tuned in on whatever's being discussed. And sometimes it's not great news. Sometimes it's good news. Sometimes it's tough news, whatever it is. 
getting the whole group tuned in, I think is like the, is the essential power of this structure. And I really like the table for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember, I'll never forget early in my venture career when I was a venture capitalist, uh, I remember an older partner taking me aside and saying like, if you want to bring something up at the partner meeting, you need to have had a side conversation with everybody else before you bring it up right. at the table. Which is so it's funny because like, Bruce, when we were talking to Bruce Dunleavy, he was like, our one rule was no pre-selling a deal. Like right. you can't walk around the hallway and say like, Hey, I'm super excited about this one later. Like if you, you know, you, I think you'll be excited too. like vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> Who got the truth? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Sit me down. Say it straight. Another story on the way. Who got the truth? Who got the truth now? Hmm.